So into the officiating a little bit here. Um, Mark Pope got a technical foul late in this game for slamming a drink on our brand new scores table. Come on, Mark. Come on. We spent a lot of money on that. And he was upset with the officiating. And in the post-game presser, he said uh, something along the lines of, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to tell you what I really feel about the officiating, but I'm not going to do that. Implying that he didn't really like it. And this is interesting because this came after a BYU media member sat right next to me in the press conference before anyone had come in in terms of coaches and said, boy, welcome to the Big 12. That was some home cooking. And I'm thinking, what the hell is this guy talking about? I just watched that game. If anything, the officiating was bad in favor of BYU. Look at the numbers, okay? Baylor did shoot twice as many free throws as BYU did. But just off the eye test, for those of us that were watching the game, I don't think it favored either team. And if anything, maybe this was just my Baylor glasses from the media section. If anything, it was favoring BYU a little bit uh, and letting them play on in some possessions. But I, I will say, to defend Mark Pope, I didn't love the officiating either. Um, I, I was just confused as to whether, and it was kind of the same thing from Saturday, which I hope this isn't a trend, but I couldn't tell if they wanted to officiate this like a Big 12 game or not. If they were going to be like, well, this is the Big 12. It's the most physical league in the conference or in the in the country. Let's let the boys play a little bit. Or what the consistency was on these hand check fouls and this 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 tough play down low. I mean, there was even some just some crazy ones that I was like, how did they miss that? You know, there was one where Langston Love gets open for a three in the corner and a guy flies by him and just hits him in the head. You know, not nothing to knock his block off, but like hits him in the head. And it was right, right in my purview. And I was like, okay, no whistle on that one. Um, there was a couple where Jacoby Walter was upset. He was having his jersey just tugged. I thought I was going to get tugged right off. And a couple of plays with these loose balls that I'm like, are they letting them play? Because on the third contact, they would call a foul. So I'm like, that was weird. Like we just saw the same hit three times, but on the third time it's a foul. It it was just, it was bizarre. It, it was not, not a terrifically officiated game, but again, maybe it's my Baylor glasses. I, I really don't think it favored Baylor at all. In fact, there were times in the game where I was watching in the arena and thinking this is screwing Baylor. Baylor needs to get to the free throw line here. But yes, they do shoot twice as many free throws as BYU does. Now, I will say this, BYU is a high-volume three-point shooting team. They shot 24, but you would also say Cam, so is Baylor. They shot 23. So why do they get to the line twice as much? Well, I would tell you, um, it wasn't much of an inside presence for BYU. This is actually something very similar to what we saw last year in general with Baylor. They would go on these long scoring droughts because they were a three-point shooting team and they didn't have anything in the way of a threat inside. So guys weren't getting hacked in the paint and going to the free throw line to, to try and stop these scoreless droughts. BYU is a three-point shooting team and not much else. In fact, I looked before the game, this is nationally, three-point percentage. Baylor was still first in the nation. BYU was 44th. So not bad for a team that's just cracking into the rankings, just filing into this philosophy of, of more threes than twos, but way down there in terms of the percentage. Now you look at attempts per game. Baylor, or excuse me, BYU leads the nation in three-point attempts per game. So they lead the nation in attempts, 44th in three-point percentage. Baylor, on the other hand, leads the nation in three-point percentage. But in attempts per game, they are, and this stunned me, 212th in how many threes they take. That's how good they are from beyond the arc. And it was it was better today. Uh, than it was on Saturday, 43%, which is about what they shoot on the season. They go uh, 
what was it, 10 to, 10 to 23. So a lot better than whatever it was, 2 of 16, I think, on Saturday. So maybe that is something to point to, Coach Pope, and looking at why didn't we get to the free throw line enough. That that might be why. Now, I will say, um, Pope was very complimentary of Baylor in, in the rest of uh, his analysis on the game. Um, said, you know, that that's what happens against good teams. They get hot and, you know, they get into their offense. We didn't get into our offense all that much, and it favors Baylor. And by the way, the turnover battle, that's been something that has been up and down this season. And when Baylor has not been good, it's it's been bad. That that's that's been the big thing, the turnover battle. How about 14 to 5 last night? They forced 14, which is good. That's fine. But to only surrender the ball five times against a ranked team that played some pretty good defense at times last night. Uh, that is tremendous, tremendous. And I asked Coach Drew about this after the game, and he was saying, you know, a lot of it is just these guys getting reps with each other. You know, Ray J. Dennis and Jaden Nunn, uh, you know, those primary ball handlers, getting reps with these guys and practice reps and game reps are way different. And I, you know, I don't want to use that excuse in the middle of January that they haven't played enough together. And thankfully we are on the course that we don't have to do that because that seems to at least have figured itself out. Of course, there's going to be games where they're throwing the ball all over the place, but uh, they have seemed to turn a bit of a corner on that uh, BYU for as much as they don't have too much of an inside presence, they could, their, their guards could get to the bucket. They outscored Baylor by 12 in the paint. They outscored them by seven on the bench, but it's plus 15 in the second half for Baylor after that uh, crazy sequence at the end of the first half where Jacoby Walter gets this technical foul. That I still don't know why. I, I I didn't get any explanation on that. No one really that I was around saw what, what happened for him to get that, but he hits a big shot and then gets a technical and BYU maxes that out. They get five points, and they get the three-point play right before half, and all of a sudden, you're like, well, shell-shocked. Like, what happened? What happened to Baylor? Uh, in, in that sequence, they're down six going into the half, plus 15 in the second half, 48 points in the second half. That That is the offense we were promised, and against a good team, they were just making more shots than BYU did down the stretch and when when they absolutely needed to to keep pushing they would and obviously Mark Pope helped us out a little bit with a minute left there was already a foul and then there was the technical foul on him for slamming that water bottle down and yelling at the refs who 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 could have guessed it BYU losing their heads and disrespecting officials huh. struck me as odd um but that puts the game away Baylor hits four free throws gets the ball and just kind of puts the thing to bed. So officials, not great. Coach Pope, I'll agree with you on that. It was, it was not great. It was not a glittering example of what this league could and should be. Um, but I would say that was far from the only problem for BYU. One of the problems that BYU had, which will certainly not be a problem for Baylor going forward is the foster pavilion. Oh, that place was on it last night. It was awesome.